was a unique exposure of a, a deeper thinking of what Africa's culture is all about and the freedom to dare to expose, to reach out to the next generation of the creative mind from art to uh, what is the digital environment of the future. And uh, an example is what has been shown, but this is coming from a professor of the Institutional Life University that can transcend the stereotypes inherited all by the Western culture and be truly, truly African in origin. I'd like to see that integrated into the International Conference Brand. <laughs>
it's time for us to make our own decisions about reconnecting to Africa. It's all about the reconnection. It's not about whether we are recognized. It's not about whether other people want us to go. We have to decide it's time to reconnect. And for me, uh, we as African Americans, and Amer Africans that are not on the continent, to stop asking ourselves, That's right. what no more can we get out of going to Africa? What for? Why don't we go to Disneyland? There you go. Why not be serious about who you are and why you're not fully who you can be? And I believe fully on the basis of my 62 years of living in Africa that Africa provides the possibility of being more than you can imagine because it will take the best of you. Exactly. And this society where I stayed for my first 20 years, it doesn't allow me to be all that I can be. Right. So for what? You can be selfish and come to Africa to be more than this society. Allows. This would be the realization of Marcus Darby's dream. It would be. We have to reconnect the African spirit and history back together. They divided us, but we, we must reconnect. And what kept us divided was ignorance. And the starting point today has to be a change in mind. There you go. My argument is the new mindset. Believe you are part of the first race, and then you can make the first race better than any other thing. Then yeah. you'll be allowed to make I in the present time. I completely agree. And we are the first race. Everybody thinks of us. Everybody. We have to remember that, we have to remind ourselves. We are not some artificial creation. Even white people came from Africans. Africans are the first humanity on earth. And we will be the last. Absolutely, we will be the last. And one of the things that is contributing to it is just look at the statistics of COVID. <laughs> I come from Uganda. And just before I got to the plane, I was driven from a small village of animal with the corner all the way to the airport. And everywhere my eyes turned, I saw one year old, two year olds. And many times they were nanny, they were taking care of the little ones. They were playing together, they were moving together. The explosion, the population explosion right. as a result of COVID is yet to be documented. Exactly. It is enormous. We didn't we reduce, more than we, we expand. And right. we've replaced ourselves exactly. while others may have decided to diminish themselves. <laughs> so the future is Africa. The future is Africa. I completely agree. And that's what we are together about. The future is Africa.
mind at Decatur University. That's the leading university in East Africa, the 13th in all of Africa, and among 700. It would be very interesting if you were to come and just test out the readiness of university leadership to allow space for even trying to explain even this brief explanation of you. If you have lived in East Africa, uh, you know, you may find that there they are slower to change, slower to adapt the new idea, even to test. Uh, if you are trying to relocate, uh, you would really have to do that because most of the East Africans say, in Uganda, I don't know other countries, but Uganda is where I stay. They are, quote, Christians, they are Muslims, but they deny being anything else. And so attempting to introduce something that is not the, the words of the Jews kosher have a problem. Yeah, well, that's part of the How do you intend to just feel your way around um, into right. institutional engagement? I, I, well, uh, I hear you because I haven't done, well, the, I did have for a year and a half when I was teaching at Howard, I had uh, Tanzanian students. Uh, they asked me to, I, I was going to build a, a television station with Howard in the island of Zanzibar. So, so they sent me a group of about 10 students that I was supposed to teach from ground up uh, to sit up a station there. And so the, the part that I found interesting you know DC, right? No, not really. But and so th those kids during the ninety, they were full grown men. They were scared to death of DC. The guys, all the guys, they they ended up getting robbed at least five times. I know what I was I was. I ended up telling them. I was like, "No, wait a minute, y'all. Like, I mean, you know, you're black. You move around now. How?" How, how did this happen? And so they ended up telling me that all the guys did was talk black to them. You know, real rough black deep man talk. You're like, hey, brother, how you doing, man? They're like, okay. <laughs> Here, take my <laughs> You know, so that was all it was, is black Americans' language is so strong toward each other that they weren't used to it, which was interesting to me, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, I... I really would relish working there because Zanzibar, when we were training to get there, uh, was very interesting to me. I, I was kind of offered one for the show that I'm doing in Portugal. I have a show that's playing there and that we were going to possibly move it to another place. And someone suggested Zanzibar a Cultural Center. And so we might try to see if all these things uh, are synchronistic because moving from there and suggesting that might be interesting. And I am moving, I just finished the book, so we're, we're and it is, it hasn't been, it's just been published, but it's going to be, uh, 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 it's going to be put together for the 24th, I'll finally get a copy. <laughs> So it's going to be open source. 
and and to make it uh, land in a place like Ghana. And I was wanting to get a place like this, one of the uh, buildings that I could have uh, event space and teach kids. Uh, when I was there, they offered me uh, bigger buildings as a private organization, and if that happens, then I'll take that, because they offered me a whole hotel of uh, my partners. I have a partner in uh, 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 and the and the the and doctor, and he's a skin doctor, and he was, uh, the pitch that I had made to them is that he had 15 uh, uh, medical facilities around in, in the 15 different districts. And each district, I was going to set up this kind of a setup in each district and reuse the equipment that he was using for doctoring. The other half of it could be used for entertainment. So that after he quit, after after five o'clock, I was going to have it where I could do kid work and show them how to make movies, and, uh, how to do podcasts and networking, animation, building things. So. Uh, with those same tools, I wanted to have a long use for them. But you have more. And so practically, practically, what we are asking for from Uganda is to fill the program with serious speakers, serious, serious thinkers, serious artists, serious committed politicians, people who are willing to talk to each other truthfully and come away with the way that we're going to take back the effort that is right now being challenged as to be stony. Right. Enough is enough. To make it where they can uh, It is a word, but uh, A creation bomb. Oh yeah. What well, is actually you meaning in those words? Okay, so when, in, when when I go to Africa, we show them. I can teach you to make a robot in 15 minutes. How do you do that? Three wires, a battery, and a motor, and a toothbrush, and you have a, a robot. So that instantly says, "Damn, I may be able to make a car." I might be able to make a airplane. I might be able to make a washing machine. I might be able to make a car. So it's instantly to say that you can create something as opposed to, oh, what component can I fix in this company? And you'd found that there was an absence of that creative mindset. It's always ongoing. They're being taught to work for them. And it's a colonized mindset that's set up because it's colonized with it's set up. Is it connected with the fact that in Africa in general, and especially West Africa, I imagine, there is such reverence for tradition, perpetuating what it was. The whole system is geared toward what you've inherited to carry it forward. Fifty years later, a life without baggage. That baggage was in imposed by a racist system where there was no freedom to be who I could and did become. Not just a professor, but a giver, a developer, promoter, a person who has generated much, much direction and wisdom and wealth to the African country, not in terms of money, but insight and vision and development of a continent that is the richest in all of the earth, but most declared most underdeveloped. And so therefore my call is, in fact, as Marcus Garvey, come back home. <laughs>